Welcome to this session on Lippy. And let's get started. So it says in the description, go to file, load homework, molarity and density, metal density problem. And I'm going to do actually only part of it. There's the metal density problem and there's the uh, liquid density problem. And I'm only going to do uh, one part out of the metals here. So here it is. And then it says you're supposed to figure out in a, in a problem description. It says you have that hopefully lying right next to you. Well, here it is. But it's it better have it printed out or lying on the side so you can don't have to talk it forth and back. Um, it says you're working in a dual laboratory. Your job is to explore the properties of some alloys of uh, silver, rhodium, platinum, in order to make brighter jewels with less cost, and so on. And you have given three. Um, jars of, of metals, and you're supposed to figure out which is silver, which is rhodium, which is platinum, and you do that by determining the density. So let me get the three metals. There's one, there's two, and there's three. They're all kind of grayish, I guess. Um, you're going to take a graduated cylinder, and 10 milliliters is what I suggest. You're going to take a balance. Actually, here it's called a scale. There you go. You take the graduated cylinder, you put it on the scale, and notice that the scale is measuring the weight um, mass of the graduated cylinder, and there's a nice, it's 24.2216 grams, and there's a nice thing on, a, on the scale here where you hit tear, and it sets it to zero, it says the gray cylinder didn't exist. And that means that once you pour something in, um, then it will only measure what you pour it in. Then it says pour in about 40 to 50 grams of metal one. Um, so let me start out with 40. And this is kind of interesting here. Um, as you see at the bottom, instead of having an exact transfer, there is actually some kind of scale here. So I'm going to get it off here, um, out of here. So I'm going to hit the withdraw button and keep the mouse down and about there. Um, OK, maybe not withdraw, maybe pour. There we go. This again. There we go. All right. So this is how much I poured in. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this here. Click on the gray cylinder again. I'm going to read off the mass, which comes out to 43.6289 grams. Do I need it that accurate? Well, probably not, because in the problem description it says it, it gives the densities um, to compare the results to, and they were in three significant figures. Um, so I really don't need the six here, but I write them down anyway. 43.6289 grams. And then I'm going to determine the volume. I right click on the gray cylinder, and it says detail view. And there we go. So I'm going to look in here. In fact, on the volume, I can go only to two significant figures anyway. And it looks like 4.2 um, milliliters. Um, I'm looking here at the uh, meniscus, so 4.2 milliliters. And then I plug these two numbers on the calculator, and I can show you that too. I can open the graphing calculator. And let's see, that'll take me a moment here. All right. So I'm going to take 43.6289. Which is kind of an overkill as far as significant figures are concerned, divide by 4.2, and I come up with a rounded 10.4 grams per milliliters, and that gives it away right away. Um, because when, when I look in here in the problem description, it says there's a 10.5 which is associated with silver. Why is it not exactly 10.5? Well, it's a measurement, and we have only two significant figures here on the volume 4.2. Um, I'm going to go back. Okay, so on metal one here, let's see if I can rename this. Yep, I can. 
also this one here would be called silver, or I call it M1 colon silver. There we go. Um, I could actually make it more accurate by simply pouring in more, because it will increase the volume, and that will therefore also increase um, the accuracy that I have. For example, if I look at this now, I have 84.53 grams available. 84.53 grams, divide by the volume of 8.1 milliliters. I come up still with 10.43, um, so that, that's pretty much the, the same that we got earlier. And then you do the same thing for the metal 2 and metal 3, and then you look at how what, what you have to do for liquid densities. And with that, I'm done with this session on explaining lab B.